What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Corey, and welcome to episode two of, um, I don't really have a name for this yet. We still got to figure that out. I saw some of the names y'all dropped in the comment section, and I'm liking them, man. We're going to figure something out by, like, the fourth episode. But if you're new to this, this is pretty much a new segment that I'm starting here on the Brand Man Network, where I just want to come in and talk about some pop culture topics that's going on in the rap world, Get your opinions on it. Maybe give you something to come and debate with me about in the comment section below or on Instagram or on Twitter or wherever you frequent. And this is just pretty much me doing a little something different outside of the educational content, man. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to start with is the what's probably been the biggest story of this week. Probably one of the most hilarious stories of this week and probably one 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 of the saddest stories of the week. It's not the saddest, but it's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny and sad at the same time. But Drake got booed at Camp Flog. Nah. So for those of you who don't know, Tyler, the creator, does this big festival every year in L.A. called Camp Flog Nah, where he pretty much invites all of his artist friends out to come perform. And it's like a really big con uh, carnival. Like it's like a real festival type carnival type thing. Now, there was an unannounced special guest, and everyone had been talking all week. It's going to be Frank Ocean. Not even all week. I would say since it had been announced. People were saying it's going to be Frank Ocean. It's going to be Frank Ocean. It might be ASL Rocky. It's going to be Frank Ocean. And lo and behold to that crowd, Drake walks out on stage. Now, this, this crowd that's been feeding into these internet rumors for the last couple of months get mad that it's not Frank Ocean, and they boo Drake, bro. Like, they boo the six god. And you can hear Drake, if you look at the video with the audio of it happening, Drake is like, hey man, I'm here for y'all. If y'all want, if y'all want me here, I'll perform. They're like, boo, boo, we want Frank, we want Frank. Drake hits them with the all right, y'all, that's been good. My name is Drake. I'll holler at y'all next time. They booed the six god, bro. That's crazy. Now, of course, Tyler the Creator was livid. He took the to Twitter to pretty much, you know, not denounce his fans, but to pretty much let them know that he was disappointed in them. And I got here one of the tweets he said, and he pretty much was like, I thought bringing one of the biggest artists on the fucking planet to a music festival was fire. But flip side, a little tone deaf knowing the specific crowd it drew, some created a narrative in their head and acted out like assholes when it didn't come true, and I don't fuck with that. Now, Tyler's pretty much saying what I've been saying to my friends who I've been arguing with this about is... What we see is a case of what I think is ungrateful fans. Because I feel him, man. Like, do you know how much Drake tickets are? Drake tickets are not cheap. You don't get to see Drake too often. But here we have this case of fans who are disappointed at rumors. They probably helped propel. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tyler never said Frank was coming out. There was never anything put out to support that Frank was, was going to be there. Frank is in New York handling the release of his new nightclub and dealing with his album. Like, he may not have even had time to do this, but you have this group of people who are, you know, in a sense, disappointed at a narrative that they helped push. Now, Drake, of course, being the person that he is, handled this really classily. And outside of just ending his set early and booking off stage before it got too serious. He put a post up on Instagram with him and Taco. Taco was Tyler's DJ, like Tyler's best friend for a long time. But he put up this post with him and Tyler, and it said, just signed a 10-year residency with Camp Flognaw. See you kids for the next 10 years until you're 30, which I think is funny. That's probably one of the best ways that an artist can handle a situation like that. And my mind is like, just laugh it off, just brush it off. Take the memes, take the jokes, and then keep living your life like you're Drake, bro. But I do want you to take out of this is if you learn nothing else from this situation, they booed Drake, bro. And if Drake can get booed, if the six guy can get booed, bro, anybody can get booed. And it's a really interesting case study of having an audience and then not really knowing what that audience wants. Because, of course, like Tyler's thinking, like, man, this is the biggest rapper in the world. Who wouldn't want to see Drake? And lo and behold, those group of kids did not want to see Drake. And just outside of what the news has been showing, I have friends who actually went to Camp Flog now. They were telling me that it wasn't the entire crowd that was booing Drake. It was like a really small section of the front crowd that was doing it. Hence why it was so impactful and why it, it just spread out so much. It's literally this group of kids in the center, in the front center were booing Drake. Just, but they booed Drake, bro. That's crazy. They booed Drake. <laughs> um, moving on to something else, man. Designer has quit good music. I don't know, is quit the right word? Maybe not quit is the right word. Either way, Designer has put out a statement saying that he is officially off of good music. And I don't know how many of you are Designer fans. I'm a Designer fan, bro. I've been a Designer fan since like he dropped his third song, Outside of Panda. I actually think he's pretty cool. But he has been very public for the last 
months or not months, years of his career is about how he doesn't really like the operation of good music. He even once put out a tweet saying about how like everyone thinks Kanye is this genius. I just think he's weird. I'm the one that brought good music back and all this stuff. Now he was dealing with typical artist woes. He didn't like probably the schedule they had him on. He probably didn't like the fact that he wasn't, uh, it didn't seem that they ever made him a priority at the label outside of the initial like flash in the pan of Panda. It seems like once that died off, they were like, all right, cool. We've done all we can do with you, designer. We're going to move on to something else. And like I said, me speaking from a fan standpoint, it never really felt like good music gave designer a fair chance to, you know, like move himself past that hit. It felt like they just wanted to milk Panda, you know, put him in the moment and then move on to something else, which if that is the case, I feel designer. I definitely agree with him, man. You will be better off getting out of this situation and being independent, man. Because at this point, he's never gonna have to work another job for the rest of his life, thanks to design, uh, thanks to Panda. And if he's smart with that money, and he has, you know, been smart with the way he moved in the industry and built some connections, man, designer could build a real career for himself. And this would be a big win for artists who are independent everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like if he's able to flip this hit, you know, flip the one hit wonder title into a real successful career. So. I'm interested to see what designer does now that he's off of good music. I hope that he puts out that project that we've been waiting on for like two years. And outside of that, man, I hope that the music that he's been talking about for these years is as good as he's been saying. Because I want designer to last, man. Like I said, I'm a designer fan, bro. I hope he sticks around. And moving on, man, I want to move on to, and this this is this is probably like a really serious case. Um, this is this is this is a point that I think needs to be talked about. But Summer Walker has canceled a couple of her tour dates because she's been dealing with social anxiety. Now, if you follow Summer Walker, or actually, let me back up. If you don't know who Summer Walker is, she is this R&B singer from Atlanta who signed to Love Renaissance. She's been absolutely killing it this year with her debut album, Over It. I mean, she, like, broke Beyonce's record for Lemonade, got, like, a billion streams in a week. Like, she she has really been dominating the R&B space, and people who are in the R&B space are really liking the sound and the movement that she's been bringing back. Now, going to what I was about to say is if you follow Summer Walker, if you're a fan of her or you, you just like her, she has been very public about her social anxiety and how she doesn't really like performing. She just likes making the music. And I'm guessing all of that kind of just culminated into this overwhelming feeling to where she felt like she needed to cut some of these tour dates, tour dates short so she could focus on herself. And I honestly think this doesn't get touched on the music enough. And somebody needs to do a dive on the fact that there are artists out there. Like, we live in a time where some of our biggest superstars don't even really want to be celebrities. Like, we are, you know, dealing with celebrities who are very open about their mental health and the issues that they go through and who are not afraid to say, like, yo, I don't want to do this. Like, this is scaring me. This is making me feel bad. I just want to write music and give it to you guys and move on with my life. And she has been extremely vocal about that since she has become the superstar that she's been. Now, she's knocked her into a date. Uh, tour down to like nine dates. Luckily, she didn't cancel the Atlanta date, mm, so I can still go. But I'm, from a fan standpoint, I'm glad that she's doing what's best for her. From my businessman standpoint, it's like, man, bro, they dropped the Drake feature bag on you. You got to make that money back. But at the end of the day, I'm all for the artist. I'm all for the artist doing what's best for themselves. And if this is what she feels like she needs to do to get herself right so she can give you know the best version of herself to us for many, many, many years to come, then, hey, I'm with it. Summer Walker, do your thing, man. We wish you the best. Uh, get better soon, and hopefully you can hit the road, you know, next year or later. In, oh, yeah, early next year or late next year, feeling a little bit better. And give us that show that we know we want from you. Moving on to even more, um, it's not really depressing news, but moving on to more bad news, man. Kodak Black has been sentenced to almost four years in a federal prison. I think the exact timing is three years and eight months. Now, the charge that they have gotten him on is pretty much uh, what he did was he lied about his criminal record and then went and attempted to purchase six pistols, six firearms from two different locations, um, and he was pretty much caught up on it. Now, Kodak Black has been dealing with a lot of legal issues over like the last two or three years, and I've been saying for a minute that he has so many legal issues, so many cases that he's fighting right now, one of them was going to get him. Um, there's actually a couple of other like weapons things he's done that I thought was going to be the reason he got locked up. Even that sexual assault charge that he caught in South Carolina, I was just, just so sure that they were going to get him for that before they got him for these gun charges. 
But lo and behold, the gun charge is what took him down. Now, what's, what's really interesting about this is the, the banter that he had with the judge, right? So there's a statement out where the judge told Kodak Black, young people do stupid things, but the problem is that you've been doing stupid things since you were 15. Um, some of that I would argue is unfair. Young hood niggas will be young hood niggas until they learn better. But I do agree with this for most of the fact is that Kodak Black has went to jail and came out repeatedly, been given enough chances to reform himself. And he always kind of gives us the same act. Like he comes out, he have his glasses on, you know what I'm saying? He'll be chilling like, yo, I'm going to be a better me. I'm going to be chill. And then like four months later, he's back on the bullshit, which the last time he got locked up and came out, he gave us ZZ. Like he gave us a hit. He was, he was wearing glasses in all his lives. He was being real chill, man. And then he slipped up again and got caught. I'm one of those people where it's hard for me to sympathize with people who, who understand that they are making mistakes but aren't actively trying to change the things that are allowing them to make those mistakes. Now, his lawyer is saying that this is probably the longest sentencing that Kodak Black would get, meaning that his lawyer seems to be pretty confident that none of the other cases that have been brought against Kodak will make it or for whatever reasons that he has to believe that. Um, and I'm willing to bet that if Kodak Black goes through this whole thing on just good behavior and stops wilding out in court, he'll probably realistically be out in like two years. That's what I think. But hopefully he comes out of this situation with a lesson learned. And that is, bro, like you are, he's realistically one of the newer acts that has earned the respect of a lot of artists, uh, earned the respect of a lot of his peers, and is actually making good music and selling records. So I hope he comes out of this situation a better person, having learned his lesson, and that he stays out of jail, bro. Stay out of jail, call that black. Do your time, get out, and then stay out of jail, man. Stay out of jail. And lastly, 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 this is a really interesting topic. Um, there's so many different reasons, but... XXX Tentacion's estate is set to release his final posthumous album. That means after they have died. Posthumous album. The album will be titled Bad Vibes Forever Volume 1. Now, if you're an X fan or if you're not an X fan, you know, that was one of the most drastic rapper passings that I would say we probably had felt up until like Nipsey passed. Um, even the whole situation, just talking to my parents, they were telling me it was very reminiscent of like when Tupac died when they were like our age or like younger, where it was like, man, you know, here's this big superstar, really young, living in the moment, and then boom, he's not here. But one thing that X as a state has really caught heat for since he's passed is these posthumous releases that he's the first one being skins, right? Which coming from an X fan man, skins just was not it. Like it felt incomplete. It felt more like these were like drafts or songs that maybe he was working on that you know how artists are, man. You know how you guys are. It was like some things are just drafts and they're just meant to stay drafts. They're not meant to ever really see the light of day and to be culminated into an actual song. And that's how a lot of those songs felt, man. It felt like a lot of those songs probably would have never made it to us or they were incomplete thoughts and we didn't get to see what the thought was going to turn into. So as a fan, man, as a fan, even though I would love to have some new great X music, I really just am starting to feel like at this point that this is like a cash grab from the estate. I didn't completely feel that way at first until right before I went to record this video. I just was looking up an article just to see if there were like any updates on the album, like there were any features or release date or anything. And the first thing I saw was that ahead of the album, they did a pop-up in Miami and were selling merch. And it's things like that that make me feel like, man, this is a cash grab from either his estate or a cash grab from his label. Because I think that even though he has passed, I think he is still tied to his contract with his record label and they're expecting everything they expected from him. Which, I mean, I feel like he made so much money off a of question mark. They should have been able to buy their way out their contract and just kind of like let him rest in peace, you know. But we're getting another X album. I'll be checking for it. I'll be listening to it when it does come out. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint like Skins did. Hopefully this album is, you know, they, they got some people on it to complete it a little better. Hopefully it feels a little bit more like X, like the X that we knew and loved when he was here and not like incomplete X, you know, the incomplete X that artists don't, or a side of them that artists don't even like fans to see because we want, they want us to see their best version of their work. Hopefully we get that version of, of what's the album called? Uh, Bad Vibes Forever Volume 1. Outside of that, man, there aren't really any albums coming out this week that I'm excited for. If you have any music coming out that you're checking out for or any artists that are dropping projects that you feel like I need to listen to, put me on game, drop their names in the comment section below so I can check them out. I got to stay on top of game. I need to know what's going on. I need all eyes and ears on the streets 
pointing me to what's hot and what needs to be heard about. Outside of that, still trying to figure out a name for this show. Um, I saw a couple of really good names. I saw somebody recommend, like, the lunch hour. I seen somebody recommend something called Counter Corey, which I actually think I like. I might, I kind of like Counter Corey. Counter Corey sounds really cool. The lunch hour sounds cool, too. Um, but I haven't fallen on anything. I haven't decided on anything. So I'm going to take the next episode or two to, like, really figure out a name so I can get this branding and stuff down, you know, put my whole marketing hat on. And if you have any ideas, man, if you're just sitting there with any good ideas in your brain, drop them in the comment section below. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Twitter. Let's figure this out together because I think this could be a really cool, and it needs a really cool name, man. You can't have a cool idea without a cool name, right? So other than that, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. If you're new to the channel, go check out my educational content. Don't come over here just bullshit and go learn some stuff too. Other than that, I will see you guys next week.